Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on Power Query parameters and functions. Now what I'm about to show you is a similar experience to the one that you get from uh, combined binaries where you can actually use a sample uh, function and a sample binary and a sample query. But we're going to do it manually so we can understand better uh, how this actually works. So the first step is to actually go ahead and connect to a single file. And as you can see, I have a really uh, really good scenario where I have a bunch of files, monthly data that I wanna consolidate into just one big table. But of course, each of these files requires a certain amount of steps or transformations. So I'm gonna connect to this one. It's uh, 01 Enero, which is January in Spanish. So I'm just gonna connect to this one. And I'm just going to navigate to this object, which is called 01 Enero. Again, it's just a spreadsheet uh, that is shown as a table here in Power Query. So edit, I'm connecting to this one. Nice. So I'm going to do the transformations. These are just a few steps that I need to apply. Uh, the first one is going to be filling down this column. So I'm just going to select this column, transform, fill, and fill down. I'm going to select this too, the mess and mm, prog name in, in English. Just going to right click and unpivot other columns. Now let's go ahead and rename this so we can just have data in English or at least the column names. So product name, and this is going to be territory. And the last one, instead of being value, it's just going to be sales, just like that. So I have all of the steps right now here. Uh, this is going to be called sample instead of the name of the file. And what I want to show you now is that I'm going to connect to now a folder, what I want to apply this same set of steps to each of those files. And once it actually uh, basically does that same uh, set of steps to each and every one of those files, simply uh, consolidate all that data into one table. So I have it here, I'm gonna go on edit and I have all of the files in that folder, really nice. And for me to change this into a function, I'm going to need to do a couple of steps. If you wanted to do this the uh, traditional way, you can go to the advanced editor and add the uh, function right here with you and basically transform this into a function by adding a parameter simply here. Uh, that can be really tedious so you can see what's going on. And then if you wanted to change the code or add more steps, then it's, it's a pain to actually go back. It's not so easy, not recommended for for uh, beginners or for people that are not so experienced with Power Query or the M language. So I wouldn't recommend that unless you're a seasoned player with uh, Power Query. In our case, we want to go with the easy route. We're going to go uh, by choosing this source step. I'm going go, to go to this one that says file contents. Whenever you see file contents, the idea of file contents is that it reads a file path and it gets a binary from that file path. So right now it's getting a binary from this file path that I have right here. What I want to do is grab that file path and I'm going to create a new source. It's going to be a file. Sorry, it's going to be other sources and it's going to be a blank query. In this blank query, I'm going to go to the view and I'm going to go to the advanced editor and I'm going to replace those quotes with this specific uh, uh, line of code. So I have the file contents and I notice that right at the end of the quotes, I'm missing a parenthesis. So I'm just going to close parenthesis, hit done, and I see now that this is the binary. This is a binary. Whenever you see just the file and the file name and how many bytes it has, this is basically just a binary. So I'm going to name this sample binary. 
my next step is to create a parameter. So I'm going to go to the home tab, manage parameters, new parameter, and simply like that, I'm going to name this binary file. I'm going to name this a required binary or a required parameter. This is going to be a binar binary, suggested values as a binary, and the file value is going to be a query, which is going to be the sample binary, just like this. There we go. So we have them, and I want to use this parameter in the sample that I created. So I'm just going to go back, and I'm going to delete that file contents that I have. It's everything in the first... Uh, everything before the first comma. So I'm just going to delete everything from there, as you can see. So binary file here. And you're going to notice that nothing changed, to be honest with you, because it's still getting the binary from that same file, because that is the value that we have on the sample binary. But now what I can do is on this sample, I can right click and I have this option that is called create function. So I'm just going to hit create function. It's going to tell me that I need a function name. It has a parameters. It reads that it's a binary file, as we can see here. Click on OK. There we go. And it creates this new group for my new function. So it's my effects. I have the sample. I have the binary file, which is the parameter. And then we have this function itself. So the idea when you transform a query into a function is that, is that it actually gives you a sample query where you can do all of the transformations and all, all of the parameters that are going to be used in that specific uh, query. And then all of what you do in this sample query will be transformed to this function. So I see all of my code here really nice and if I add more steps for example I want to keep top rows I want to keep uh, the first 15 rows I want to delete this column uh, I can go back to my effects my function and I notice that hey it added those two steps so get first rows and remove columns so there's a lot of convenience when you actually create a function this way instead of doing it the more traditional way. So that is really nice. Uh, so I don't really need these two steps. And what I want to do now is simply go ahead and apply that function to every file or every binary that I have in this uh, folder. I'm going to select these two because I don't really need the other ones. I'm going to click on add column, custom column, and I'm simply going to add my function. So I'm going to apply my function to each of those binaries that are on the content column. So just like that, hit OK. And I noticed right away that, hey, it's not working for the February, March, April, May or June. So it's only working for January. Why will that be? Well. If we have done this the traditional way, uh, we will need to actually transform that back into a normal query and see what's going on. And that may be really tedious. But in our case, we just have to go to the sample and see what's going on at this code level to see all of the steps. So right here, I see that I'm connecting to an Excel workbook. So I have the binary, that's no issue, but on the navigation, a section, I see that I'm navigating to a specific spreadsheet name to the 01 Enero or 01 January. And that spreadsheet only exists in the January workbook. So this is not good at all. This is hard coded and we really don't want this to be hard coded. We need to find a way where that can actually work for every file. So Instead of connecting directly to this table, just by clicking on this table, I'm going to do a set of transformations or a set of filters to be more precise. So first, I only want to get the objects that are equals to sheets. So just like that, I will always get the sheets. Now, I notice something in my files. 
all of them uh, where the data is stored is not called uh, sheet, it's actually called the name of the month. So I can do something really nice and I can say that it does not begin with the word sheet. Now since most of the people that are actually doing this are Spanish people, I can add something that is actually in Spanish which is the translation of the word sheet, but in Spanish. Next, I just want to make sure that I'm just grabbing just one table. And I'm just going to click keep top rows. And I'm always going to keep the top row. So just one table that I want to expand. Now I'm going to select this column and remove all other columns. I'm going to expand this. And the rest of the steps are actually correct. So I can promote the headers. I can change the type. I fill down. I unpeel the other columns. And then I rename all of the fields. Just like that. And now when I go back to this uh, output query. Let's rename it up query. I notice that, hey, it's actually working now. So everything is working as expected. So I can remove this one and expand. And just like that, it is working. Now I'm going to give you one more example of how easy this is. I'm just going to change this function so it only gets me one row of data. And when I go to my output query, I see that it's only giving me one row of data, just like this. So that's really nice. If you want to go back and just change one part of the code uh, of the function that you created, you can actually do it this way. And the really nice thing about this is that it's not only for uh, binary fields or binary parameters, but you can actually use any type of parameters. You can even add more parameters. Um, you can add the parameters where uh, let's go ahead and create a new parameter. Let's go ahead and just say that this is uh, top rows and this is going to be a numeric value and this is just going to be 15 so top rows is my new query from this one I can simply go back to source filter rows filter rows one get first rows uh, in this one, so let's just say that instead of one, this is going to be top rows. And top rows right now is going to be one. And I see here that for my example, I don't have the function. I have the function right here, but I don't have the top rows defined. So I'm just going to say that we only want the first top row. And it actually fix everything. So that's a good thing. It actually fixed my function. Now it's showing two parameters, the binary file, which is a binary and the top rows as a number. And then when I go back to the uh, output query, I can just fix that right here so it actually grabs uh, just one top row so that's really nice I can add new and, and, and more complex parameters uh, it can be text it can be numeric it can be adding more and more and just add it to my sample query and it will be transformed automatically to a function for me without me having to actually get into uh, the nitty-gritty of the code in the advanced editor uh, so the definition of the emphasis is updated whenever a query sample is updated. So if I actually go into the query editor, the advanced editor, uh, then it will disable those updates. So I don't want to continue that. I just want to go and just keep it exactly how it is. And that's basically what happens when you go ahead and simply connect to a folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and click on the 
folder. Let me see if I have it. There we go. So it's this one. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And I'm going to go to the source. And right here, when I click on this uh, combined files icon, I get the av evaluating query experience. And it's simply going to do everything that I have done manually, but it's now going to be guided through the UI. So it's first file, um, just like that. So it's trying to create, as you can see, everything, the sample query, uh, the transform sample file, which is this, and then the function, which is this. So again, similar experience, binary to binary, uh, sample file, sample file, uh, the sample query, which is this, and then the sample function, which is this. And then the, the actual output, which is outside, which is this. Uh, so that's how manually you do it. And that's how the power green actually achieve this experience by using the new managed parameters, which are really nice. And I encourage you to actually give this a try. Uh, so that's it for this video. And hopefully in the next video, we're going to show you some really neat and really cool stuff uh, that are actually new to the Power BI Desktop and Power Query. Thanks.